Hey everybody, happy Friday to you. It's kind of one of those rainy, late August cloudy days, so I thought it would be perfect. Grab a cup of coffee, do a little storytelling session, and update you on some of the really cool new products that are coming out. We got to see just the other day when our friend Ben Hunting came in. He's our Sage Rankton, Rio Loon, Outcast Smith, all sorts of rep. He does just about everything and he does a great job and brings us these new products that we get to preview and order and have in next year so this is your opportunity to get a sneak peek at what's coming down the pipeline grab your cup of coffee and we'll hop right in Let's do story time first because we had kind of a crazy and unfortunate thing happen to one of our staff members when they were fishing with the boys on Monday. Joe, Luke, and Jake all kind of headed down south to do a little bit of smallmouth bass fishing. Kind of a end of the season get together, spend some time on the water event. Luke's headed back to GVSU this fall for, his, for another semester. Joe's headed back to start his teaching again. Starts up after Labor Day. Crazy, that's just in a few days. And Jake went along as well, make sure they were having fun and doing things right because he's an Indiana boy, he knows his smallmouth bass. Fishing wasn't the problem. They had fun. I mean, take a look at some of these pictures. They caught plenty of fish. They were really hoping to try out some of these fun swim bait style patterns. I tied them up a few things to take with as well. Those caught fish, but it really sounded like crayfish was the presentation. So a lot of times they'd throw either a floating line or a light line with intermediate tip and just bounce and hop these crayfish along the bottom. The slow way to fish, it's not as visual, but it was pretty productive. Both Joe and Luke got some really nice chunky fish out of that water and I'm kind of jealous I didn't get to go personally, but the crazy things didn't happen on the water. Uh, unfortunately, once they got off the water, which was probably 10 o'clock, not that late really. I mean, sometimes that late afternoon low light bite can be really good. They went and they got Joe's truck. They had done the shuttle ahead of time. The trailer was there, no worries. Well, Joe went to go start it up. It sounds like it started up and sounded like a monster truck rally. It's just revving up super loud. So they crawled under there and sure enough, someone had cut out his catalytic converter. Chop, chop, wham, bam, gone. Which to me is just crazy. I'm, we're Maybe we're a little spoiled up here in Traverse. We don't have that kind of issue often um, the cop they talked to said it's real common down there but really never at boat ramps so take a look at this picture look at this thing it is clean cut the cop said it takes about two minutes to do this slide under there you got a battery powered sock so Joe's kind of down about that you know if you get a chance uh, maybe send him some love on Instagram or something you know crazy stuff insurance is gonna help him out but it was a very very expensive fishing trip all of a sudden. So it's 10, 10.30 and the boys are stranded. My phone rings, it's Jake and he says, I think we have a problem. <laughs> so luckily my wife who has great eyesight and helps me spot deer and I hop in the car and we drove for over an hour to go get the boys in the middle of the night. <laughs> Check out, we got there and Bacon's asleep on the trailer. I mean, you can see it here. And the boys are just tired, beat tired. But we went, we got Luke's car. Luckily, Luke's car hadn't been touched at the other ramp. And we got back probably 2.30 in the morning. We got to sleep by three, just in time to get four hours of sleep before meeting up with our friend Ben in the morning at 10. And, uh, you can take a look at our morning after here. We were a little groggy, sorry. What time is it, Jake? Uh, 9.25. Tired? I'm exhausted, I don't, an autopilot. Yeah, it was a long night. It's a, it's a great day, isn't it? <laughs> There's like a 30 second pause before anybody said anything. Uh. Ooh. What'd you get? Um, a bang lemon drop. Oh, that's 
got a warning label. Um, oh, that means it's good, right? This means it's extra good. Um, it's one of those days, huh? It's gonna be one of those days, big time. Big time. On a normal day, you know, coffee's usually good. You got about 75 to 115 milligrams of caffeine in it. Red Bull's gonna put you around 114, which is great when you're not super tired, but kinda need a little kick, right? Monsters on those days where you get a little more, you know, you're feeling a little more groggy, right? You get around 148, 152 milligrams. But on a day like today, we have the full on 300 milligrams of caffeine. Um, we're really, we're getting it today. It's, it's gonna be fun. It's take no good. prisoners. So once we got caffeinated there, I with my coffee and you saw what Bacon had there, uh, questionably legal amounts of caffeine so we could be prepared. Ben showed us some really cool new stuff coming out from Fish Pond. I love this company. I don't know if you've dealt with Fish Pond before, but they they make a very small product lineup in the, in the scheme of the fly fishing world and they stick to it and they only make changes when they feel like they need to to improve something or just to, to make something better for anglers, not just to sell you new stuff. And they use tons of recycled products and materials and fabrics, and it's just kind of a cool company to have around. So the first thing we saw was the new Firehole backpack. This thing was nice. Now, backpacks don't do, they don't do it for everybody, and not everybody needs a fishing backpack. This has a cool feature though that I would have really liked to have had when I lived out west is an integrated pocket that's designed specifically to be carrying waders and boots. So if you're hiking in, you know, you're going up to an alpine lake or, you know, maybe a, a secret stream with some big grayling or some big cutthroat, this is a really, really cool backpack that's worth checking out. It's under $200. I think it's $179, which is super reasonable for a technical backpack that can carry a lot of cool fishing stuff waiter belt comes off it's got of course the cycle pond recycled fabric it's just it it's well thought out like a lot of things with fish pond it's compatible with their other packs so you can strap on a chest pack to your backpack and then switch it and have it right up front so you can have a backpack in the back and a chest pack up front and <laughs> i mean it's kind of like a mullet it's business up front party in the back i mean who doesn't like that next thing we saw was the sagebrush pro vest now i know vests maybe aren't the sexiest thing in the fly fishing world but i dare you to find me a pack that has as much organization for all your stuff this thing has 17 exterior pockets there do you need that i mean i don't know i have that much stuff crammed into my other packs and then i dig for it this way you can stay organized you just have to memorize where all your stuff is. That's what's so nice about it. Again, recycled fabric, it's mesh, it's adjustable, so you can wear it all season. You can wear it over a bunch of layers in the winter. Vest makes sense, and I, I think we'll probably be doing a video in the future about that, about maybe thinking about going back to the vest. Stay organized, it's simple, it works. Plus, all your modern conveniences are there. There's a, a holster for your net, so if you have a long handle net, it just slides back. You don't have to use the D-ring. They've brought back a pocket so you can actually put some layers, lunch, a water bottle, all those things that should be in a fishing pack are there. Pretty cool. We also got to see the switchback belt system 2.0. They've redone it. If you haven't seen it, it's an integrated belt and pack system. It's ambidextrous. You can switch it. Keeps a medium sized pack right on your hip that slides in and out of position so you can put it behind you, get it out of the way. The belt comes with a net holster. Well thought out, simple. If you like things simple, the switchback belt system 2.0 is a pretty good way to go. Along those lines, we saw the South Fork wader belt, really nice. This is really similar to the belt system that you've seen from Fish Pond in the past two years. But I got a little insight on why they redid it, and it's another reason why I like Fish Pond. The supplier that Fish Pond was using to get the materials to make this product, their prices were going up. 
Okay, and Fishpond didn't necessarily want to ask you all to spend $100 or whatever it was gonna be on a waiting belt. So they went and they worked hard and they found another supplier that can make things to their specifications for their price to keep it right at $49.95. It's one of the most popular things we have in our shop. It's a really cool, simple belt. You can add attachments all you want. You can be like Batman out there if you want, or you can keep it clean and just put a net in the back and be comfortable all day long. I was really excited to see the Canyon Creek chest pack. I think this has been a long time coming for a chest pack from Fish Pond that's that low profile but slightly upgraded from what they have in the San Juan, but not all the way waterproof like what they have with a Thunderhead. Reminds me a lot of the Thunderhead, but in a more affordable, more organization focused pack. You get a big mesh panel in the back, which is way more comfortable than just a neck strap. You get an integrated net holster and you get your standard fold down fly bench kind of workbench system. It's well put together. I really was a big fan of it. It's low profile and it's right at $79.95. I mean, a, a really nice chest pack for under 80 bucks. That's a, that's a sweet deal. And I think this is gonna be a really, really popular option. I like having a really small pack. I use that San Juan, especially when I'm focused on one hatch or one thing happening. I don't wanna take the whole tackle bag with me. It's simple and makes my day more fun just having one thing to focus on. After we finished up with Fish Pond, we shared some good jokes, had another cup of coffee, and we jumped right into Loon, another favorite company of ours that seems to make just useful things that everyone seems to like. So new products coming down the line, there's a few brand new things and a few improved things that they've been making for a few years. First thing is the fly dip. Liquid floatant, if you haven't used it yet, it's really nice, it's very popular for us where you can just dip your fly, shake it loose, and you're back fishing. Now, what's cool about this system is you can actually put a, drown a submerged drowning fly in that dip, retreat it, one system, you're back fishing. Pretty cool, instead of the two, Aquel or whatever you're using and a dry shake, you know, it's a two part system. So very popular. What they've done is actually come out with a dun color, D-U-N dun color, instead of the bright white. So if you want a little bit more subdued look to your fly as it floats down the river, the dun will do the job. Tippet rings. Everybody has tippet rings now, so Loon has their own, which is kind of nice. Um, they seem to be pretty clean, nice and sharp looking. I think they're going to be kind of a matte finish, so not the shiny stuff, which will be nice. Check them out here. They look pretty nice, right? Good packaging, looks clean. <laughs> Tip, if you haven't found this out yet, do not take your tippet rings out of the package. Always leave them in the package because you're never going to be able to find them. Can't tell you how many times I've looked into my, my nymph bag. I have a fold down setup from Fish Pond, and there's two or three of those just floating around in there, and it's maddening. So keep those tippet rings in the package. It'll make a huge difference in finding them. For those of you who like to imbibe on the water, Loon is coming out with an XL version of the Nip and Sip, a very popular bottle opener and nipper combo. It's about time. <laughs> the other one was real small. It was kind of tough to get the, the leverage right with opening a beer. So this one is a little bit larger, handles things well, and it's nice to have a bigger, chunkier nipper a lot of times in your hand, especially if it's colder out. So good job on this one, Loon. Last but certainly, certainly not least, is the UV Plasma Light. This thing is massive. I mean, it looks like one of the biggest size mag lights you can get you know the truckers carry around that's how big this thing is and it is super cool if you just want to blast your stuff and get it cured like that this light is going to do it the other thing it's really useful for we've found we have a ton of guys that do conventional as well and we love the rechargeable lights the infinity light for recharging glow spoons things like that they work they're great um i have really been impressed with the loon lights i have the infinity light personally and i feel like i never have to recharge it it lasts so long and this thing's going to be even better all right well that does it for story time and a quick recap of some of the cool things we saw with ben on monday from fish pond and loon 
we were able to see some really cool things as well coming out from Rio, coming out from some of the other lines like Reddington that he carries. We just can't fit it all in. So I'm gonna feature some of that stuff over on Instagram. Follow us at the Northern Angler, maybe reach out, tell us what you'd like to see in terms of content. We appreciate you watching these videos. If this is kind of the thing you might want to see some more of, leave us a comment down below. This is a little bit of a departure from some of our normal tutorial videos, fly tying videos, things like that. So if you get a chance, maybe hit that like button, maybe hit the subscribe button if this is helpful, that helps us out a lot. And uh, don't forget to reach out to Joe, give him some love. Hope to see you all very soon in the shop or out on the water.